Well, this morning um, I had a parcel from France and um, this box is obviously another box I had. I've not successfully repaired the other pocket watch. I've got another mainspring this morning. Uh, the hook was the wrong way round. Um, I bent the hook the other way round and it bloody broke, so I pissed off with that. I'll probably sell it on eBay minus the mainspring. I've had enough of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to open the box. So let me put the camera down. Right, there it is. It's a French pocket watch. I would imagine it was made about 1920. Because it's got a pin set movement in it. Uh, there it is. Little, oh, the bloody light's going to shine on it. I'm trying to, I'm having problems with them. Um, there it is. Yeah, it might be other, yeah, this camera doesn't refocus when you do video. But that's it, it's got a gold face, well, a grey face with salmon writing on. I reckon it's probably 1920s, it might be just before 1930. It might be 20s, it's got, I'm just gonna, it's got a small fault with the case. Uh, the hinge has been repaired and it's a bit rough, the bar is sticking out more on this side. So you do that. And there's a sharp bit there. Uh, whether I take it to a jeweler's and get that filed or I do it, I don't know. Um, I not seem to have a lot of luck with watches lately. So what we're going to do is try to open it. Oh, the bloody camera strap is in the way now, isn't it? Camera strap is in the way. And what we'll do is we'll open the fly lid. I know it won't refocus if I hold it. No, I can't bloody see. Um, so, I'm not, no, it's not going to focus. These things never fucking do, do they? Uh, this camera doesn't refocus if you change the position. Um, but as you can see, even though it's a bit out of focus, oh, the bloody case is going to keep bloody shutting. Um, that it's actually a cylinder and um, it has um, looks like some jewels in it, one, two, three, four, five, it's probably got about eight or nine jewels in it, I don't know how many. Uh, the case is some kind of metal, uh, soft metal, well hard metal, probably some kind of pewter or some kind of nickel maybe nickel I don't know and it's actually running if you look, look at that it's running it might need an oil but the movement's very very clean um, so I've not sort of mess with it and probably won't um, but that's the watch, and it has a dust cover, it's probably why the movement's so clean. And the hinge has been repaired, so the bar sticks out more on this side. And of course the edge of that bar is rough. Now when I can fire that, uh, what I'm going to do is put my glasses on, my magnifiers on, and see if I can actually repair it. Yeah, that bar is sticking out more. The hinge has been repaired and there's just more bar now. As you can see, there's a bit of that bar is a bit longer. So consequently, it's catching. Uh, the hinge is broken on this side and repaired and it's left a bit more. Uh, nothing much can be done about it. So, I mean, the only thing I can do is file that bar. If I can't do it, just take it to the watchmaker that I know. Get him to do it. As you can see, there's the case. And I got my magnifier on so I can actually see the screen on my... um. What's its name now? So that's the movement. I'm trying to make it focus, that's it. 
that's the movement. It's a, it, as you can see, it's a Highlander, a cylinder escapement. So I say there's been slight damage to the hinge, but I don't think that's all the earth. Uh, once the case is closed and that bit's filed. And because it's not a key wind, you won't got to open it all the time. I would call it general wear and tear. So that's a quick look at a pocket watch I got from France. It's Swiss made, but it looks in very clean condition. Perhaps I'll wash out in some oil. Perhaps as if it's running really well just to leave it. Which is sad to say. I would imagine it's made out of some kind of nickel, some kind of metal. Um, so what I'll do is I'll polish it up and see um, what it looks like. It says stainless steel in French, but I don't think it's stainless steel. It looks, it doesn't look like stainless to me. It looks like um, nickel, because it's it got that nickel colour. But a very nice pocket watch, pin set movement on the side. I would date it probably about 1920, or as I call it, uh, uh, not teen Benzi. And uh, as you can see, it's getting a bit out of focus now. But um, it's a really nice pocket watch. And it's got quite a nice tip. The face is in good condition. The case is quite good. Apart from that little that hinge, it's going to have to um, have a little bit of a tidy up. But uh, I paid £35 for that. And that's about, you couldn't get a pocket watch over here for that. Um, eBay and if it's advertised in England it tends to go for more people don't like to buy things if it's advertised in a foreign language and but to me it doesn't bother me I can just go on to uh, understand French and um, it doesn't take me very long to understand things once I get the swing of it so thank you as they say in, in Spain muchas gracias um, I don't know what they say in France um, I'll have to find out what that is.